right, I'm ready. All right. And we're going live in three, two, one. Hello, Panther fans, and welcome to another podcast of the Four Man Rush. I'm your host, Timmy VO, here with Kevin and Will. I was going to say Larry, but Larry's not with us yet. Um, I, I think he might be dropping by. Who knows? What's up, Larry? Um, and what's up, Panther Nation? It's been a while. Uh, we had a little hiatus, you know, uh, you know, off-season things are going on and um, things of that nature, and we're here to talk to you about that. We're going to consider this a uh, free agency uh, episode. Um, the fellow's going to dive into to some details about who we signed, who we released, um, you know, and, you know, bring into uh, the stats and all the good info and dirt on the whole situation. Um, and also we'll talk about free agencies or free agents, excuse me, that might be coming through the old uh, Panther locker room to help us out next year. So uh, we're really going to dive in, into some uh, names and the details about that. So we're glad you're here with us. We're glad you're here with us. And um, if you have not heard, you've been living under rock, things of that nature, uh, the Foreman Rush has officially, um, you know, partnered up with Manscaped. Um, if you guys are not familiar with, with Manscaped, it is a, uh, uh, a men's, um, I guess you could say, I don't know what's what's the term I'm looking for. It's really good stuff for your balls, man. I'm 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 just I'm just gonna keep it 100 with you. If you don't if you're not familiar with Manscape, um, it's a um, it's a, it's a modern man's take on grooming. Okay, uh, it, it, you know it, they were nice nice enough to uh, give us give us some uh, uh, some stuff to use, and here's some some more of their products. Um, in, in case you haven't heard of Manscaped, you, know, you go to manscaped.com and, um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, share a little, uh, code that you can use on the website, man. You can get free shipping, 20% off on their products, uh, on, you know, on behalf of the four man rush. And, uh, you know, it's four MR scaped, right? And then I'll put it right there for you Four MR scaped. Right, you type that in there, you know, and then um, yeah, get yourself twenty percent off on whatever you order. Um, and, uh, Kev, Will, I know, I know you guys got some products too, man, and I, 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 I got, I got, man, I like that stuff, man. And that, that, what, the, what, the, what they call it? It's, it's like a, it's like a clippers for your balls, man. It's a Bushmaster or something like that. It's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy, man. What, what how, did you, how did you guys feel about, uh, feel about your products, man? I, I, I love that stuff, man. I wish I had that shit when I was playing football. Yeah, well, for me, Tim, I, you know, I finally got, you know, I got, I was the last one to get mine, so. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I had to wait till the weekend, and uh, I, I must say, like you, as someone who uh, played sports in high school, it definitely would have helped out. You know, it, it is, it's definitely, it's like getting a, uh, it's like a male's version of a petty and a manny for your man's in them. Word. Word. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I ain't even gonna front. I was a little skeptical because you know, you know how protect we is of our junk. You know, what I'm sure. saying, you know, the wind blow too hard. Like, whoa, what's that? You know, oh, saying, man. you know, you know. But overall, though, man, I was, I was surprisingly shocked at at oh, at the products, man. I mean, you know, trimming it down, you know, keeping it nice and grown. You know, hey. Mm -hmm. We fellas, right? Let's just keep it real. You know what I'm saying? You know, you want the ladies to be down there long enough, make them comfortable. You know, let them, you know, fall asleep down. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know, like Bernie Mac say, put your head right here. Put your head right here. <laughs> <laughs> you I know, mean, now it, you give them a reason to put their head right there. But yeah, overall, man, I mean, I ain't going to lie. Great, the the names tripped me out. You know, when I saw ball deodorant, I'm like, deodorant yeah. for the balls? That's you know, ball is, toner. Though. I was like, toner. You know, okay, I. Right. It is. Yes. I mean, it smells great too, man. It, it, it smells good, and it, it, it really makes everything down there all nice and comfortable. Yeah, that's the main thing, comfort. You know, all jokes aside, I mean, one of the things. So once I got done, and I was just like, I felt a difference, but it was a comfortable difference, and it's like, oh, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm. Whoa. I'm not only a client; I'm had to be president one day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, shout out to Big, 24 years today. RIP yeah. to the late, great, notorious 
But uh, that's why to bring that up. But yeah, man, I Tim, I I like it. I'm I'm a right. fan, and not just because you know you know yeah. of the partnership, but I mean just the fact that I used it and I, how I felt afterwards. You know, um, in the chat, I, if I have a date, I'll let you know how it goes. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all don't want to see that chat, folks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Will, did you did you want to uh, add anything to it? Yeah, man. Pretty much said everything that needed to be said. I mean, you know that lawnmower 3.0, the product that they yeah, sent to it. us that if we tested out for a few weeks, you know. And hey, yeah. everything is hyped up to be, man. Go out and get it. Take care of yourself down there, man. What's up? Real talk, real talk. I mean, it's important, man. It's saved 20% off free shipping. Manscaped.com, right? And the, you know, 4MR, that's poor man rush. 4MR, like so. Scaped, right? So, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, drop a link and all our other good stuff in the uh, in the comment section for you guys, all right? Appreciate you guys, man. And thank you, Manscaped. It's great stuff. All right, so let's hop into uh, some uh, football discussion, man. It's It'd be the draft here before you know it, folks. And the free agency kicks off next week, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, hey, we're, we're going to talk about that. All right. Um, uh, Kev, we'll start with you. And uh, we'll, um, you, can, you can jump in there and, um, and add, add your knowledge uh, on, on the situation. I guess we'll talk, talk about who, who got let go so far. Um, Kev, you, you want to name a uh, name? A name? <laughs> name names. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Um, far as someone that was let go, I, I, I'm gonna definitely do this name because we know how a few of the other four men rush feel about him in the chat. Uh, that would be one Stephen Weatherly, uh, mm. defensive end who ironically went back to where we got him from, Minnesota of all places, and he had the absolute nerve, the gall, the audacity to have an interview and said. He took Carolina and got a little content. And that was another way of saying, appreciate the money, but I'm going back and do what I got to do. So if he has some sort of statistical standout year, then, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going to be pissed because that let me know you just – you and them goggles came down here and, you know what I'm saying, you just pretty much robbed us for a few mil, and now you're going back and you're trying to show out. But anyway, I'm not mad. That added – I think $5 million to our salary cap. So, hey, you know, appreciate it, but we good. Uh, but, yeah, Stephen Weatherly was um, was released. I think he only had seven tackles on the season, uh, which is, wow. I've, we've had players have seven tackles in a quarter before. I you, know, you know, shout out to Luke Keekland and Thomas Davis, you know, because that's who I think of when I think about seven tackles in a quarter. But anyway, uh, yeah, man. So, yeah, that's, that's one of the big releases. Uh, was uh, Stephen Weatherly wasn't wasn't a surprise at all, uh, you know, based on production and the fact that uh, you know he got basically sent to IR without even a fuss. So you know, all of a sudden injured on IR. Uh, I think Coach Rule was like, "Get this bullshit away from me." <laughs> I think, matter of fact, I think him and Greg Little got put on IR at the same time. Like, get this shit off my. T- <laughs> <laughs> Both of y'all. <laughs> Hell on. Yeah, so so uh so that was mine. I went with um uh, because it was a lineman, I went with that. I let Will handle the the uh, other release from the secondary. Yeah, so we're talking about the Trey Boston. Uh was that was probably more of the was more surprise cuts, I think, this offseason. I mean he didn't play bad last year but i think given his contract i think he's been the past couple off season he's been waiting for that big contract the panthers finally gave it to him i guess the question is did what he do enough to outperform the young guys on the roster i mean you got sam franklin there you got justin burris played well jeremy chin wants to move back to safety according to phil snow miles hartsfield stepped in and took some reps there and then they got another guy they drafted back there and Kenny Robinson who didn't get to play much last year. So maybe they're going to get a better look at him in camp in this summer to see if he's able to step up and gain some reps there as well. So I just think ultimately Trey was the eye guy out. 
I mean, I think I like the energy Trey brought to the field. You know, he always played hard. I mean, he missed tackles. You know, he had that habit of diving at ankles, taking poor angles, giving a lot of yards after contact, things like that. But in coverage, we usually was his strength. But last year, he wasn't that great in that area either. I think towards late in the season, the more you watch film, Trey was playing more in the box. And they had Justin Burris, Sam Franklin, and those guys playing at single high free safety. So I think at this point, it was just a more of a cap casualty considering the challenges teams will have to go this offseason with salary cap issues. It's just a matter of they can have younger, cheaper guys who can give you similar performance that Trey did at his higher salary. But no, you know, wasn't Trey nothing but the best. You know, he was a Panther for a long time. He was a Tar Heel before that. Very big part of the Charlotte and Carolina community. Interacts with fans on Twitter day in and day out. Hopefully he lands on his feet and finds him another job and can play for a team that can make a deep run in the playoffs. Thank you. What's up, Larry? Fellas, fellas, what's going on with y'all? What's good, man? Hey, what's good, Playboy? We're, we're talking about free agency. Um, well, as far as you know, guys who are, who have been let go so far. We'll we'll dive into people who can potentially come here and all other stuff in a second. But um, did did you have anything to add about it, about the folks we let go so far? Don't know what I missed, but I'm glad uh, Stephen Weatherly is absolutely not on this roster anymore. He was getting away with, with robbery, the ski mask way. You know what I'm saying? They gave him about, what, $6 million just to not hit no quarterbacks, not get no sacks, not get no hurries? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that I think was, we all was... agree on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> he got us the ski mask way, man. Straight up. Hmm. <laughs> Um, I was kind of also. I was sad to see. Uh, when did we release uh, Pilardi? I know he was hurt, but the year that he was active, he was an outstanding punter. I was kind of upset that we let him go. Yeah, yeah, one of those things, man. One of those things. But yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, between Trey and you know. <laughs> Pilardi, I, I, I guess, you know, it, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. So let's talk a, bit, let's talk a little bit about uh, pending free agents. Um, I mean, there's there's some people, you know, hitting the market right now. And, um, I mean, who, who knows who, who we could be, you know, um, talking talking numbers with right now. So, um, Kev, uh, let's, why don't you start us off on some uh, pending free agents that you uh, have your eye on. Well, as far as uh, pending free agents, uh, someone I was kind of getting my own eye on actually got the uh, tag by the Giants today. I was kind of shocked by that. That was um, um, Leonard Williams, the defensive tackle out of the uh, – that was somebody I had seen linked in a couple articles, uh, someone that I looked at would be, would have been nice to pair with uh, pair with Dare Brown in that starting rotation of defensive tackles. Uh, but uh, they uh, they threw that last second tag on him by the Giants, so you know that really took my only um, lineman off the books that I was uh, seriously looking at here. So I guess I had to jump to another position close to the line. Um, someone that I we got to give props to Monty. I, what I will because he was the first one that started shouting out the dude's name. Um, I think it's pronounced Joe New Smith, the tight end out of Tennessee. Is that how you said? So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, with him, I mean, we're talking about someone that's only 26 years old, 26 years old. Uh, from from what I've seen of him, you know, he is a very effective run blocker, but he's definitely a, a very natural pass catcher, uh, mm-hmm. appears to run good routes, able to get some separation, knows how to be physical, um, you know, at the point of, you know, release to get the ball. Uh, he's definitely will be someone that if we're able to, you know, sign a free agency at the at the age of 26, you know, that's one less position we have to focus on in the draft, uh, per se, because uh, 
I know Ian Thomas is still in the contract. Uh, he's coming up on his uh, fourth year. Um, Chris Manhurts at tight end is an unrestricted free agent. Mm-hmm. So likely like to see him get signed back because he was the number two run block and tight end in the league last year. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, for me, as far as free agency, yeah, I, I would definitely would like to uh, like to see um, uh, John New Smith from um, Tennessee be the next person to take a shot at tight end in the post Greg Olson era here in Carolina. Lord knows we need a good one, man. Uh, we need a good tight end, period. <laughs> uh, Will? Yeah, with me, I think it starts with the um, addressing the secondary. I know that's an issue Tepper had mentioned earlier this offseason as well. Uh, Rasul Douglas is a free agent, so that opens up a starting corner spot opposite Dante Jackson. Right now, we got two second-year players who got a little bit of reps, but I don't think either guy did enough to stand out and secure a starting role right away. So I think, you know, with considering the draft needs on the offensive line, potentially maybe even quarterback, maybe, you know, we may not be able to take a corner high, so we may have to look to the free agency market to see who's available. I mean, there's a lot of options they can go with addressing the cornerback position in free agency. Though At the high end, you got – Patrick Peterson, who's a free agent from the long time, you know, all pro guy, one of the better guys in the league for a long time with the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. I think the issue with him is age. He may not be in the, uh, his window to try to win now may not be aligned with what the Panthers are in their rebuild process right now. So he might look to go to a contender to try to make a mm-hmm. deep playoff run and win a Super Bowl in the next year or two. Mm-hmm. I think that'll be an option. There, you got um, another guy I think they should definitely go after is Shaquille Griffin from the uh, Seattle Seahawks, starting corner for several years. Scott Fitterer was part of the team that drafted him. I mean, he's played very well as a solid corner. You know, Seattle likes to play a lot of single high safety, so he's out there on the island in cover three. They like to play that press cover three defense out there, so he's definitely a guy I have my eye on considering his connection with the Panthers' new general manager. Um, some other guys to look out for. I know um, on the there's some nickel guys available from uh, Jacksonville. DJ Hayden. I don't know how much of that is in need though, depending on what they want to do with uh, Corn Elder. Bring him back. I thought he actually played well last year, but we'll see if they go with the free agent nickel or resign Corn or what his market is as well. So I think there's a lot of directions they can go at the cornerback position in free agency. I think the edge rusher position opposite Brian Burns is another area they might want to address. Uh, gross models played well his rookie year, but again, like the other rookies, you know, you want to bring in competition and make him earn his reps. And the guy I'm looking at is a uh, Hassan Reddit. He might be out of our price range, but I mean, you consider his connection with Matt rule and Phil snow. Both of them were coaching him at temple. Uh, he fits mm. that hybrid type of player that can play multiple positions that they like. He can play outside linebacker, rush off the edge. He was very productive as a pass rusher last year. I think he had one of his better years and really came on towards the end of the season. So, I mean, imagine having that pass rushing duo with him next to Brian Burns. So I think that's mm. another direction they can go, given the familiarity with the system, the temple connections the way Matt Rule used to rave about him in college and the way the level of respect that he has for Matt Rule and Phil Snow. So Hassan Reddick's a guy I definitely keep an eye on. I'll let uh, Kevin Larry discuss the defensive tackles. I think that's another area we potentially want to address, add some depth there, because I think the only guys right now we have is Derek Brown, Bravion Roy, and Zach Kerr. Mm. And then some of our own guys, I mean – what are we going to you know? Where's Curtis Samuel going to do? I was, I think he's going to probably have a good market for him, you know, with CMC healthy. What's he going to be a fourth option on Carolina? And I just think he's way too yeah. talented for that. He's going to yeah. demand way more money as a second option on another team. So I can see Curtis Samuel probably testing the market and getting paid well by another team. Uh, F.A. Obata is a guy. Maybe we can re-sign and add D-line depth and keep that rotation going I thought he played well in spots I think what's interesting about him is he got cut in the camp 
But then as a result of some injuries, they brought him back, and he actually stepped in and had one of his better years and played well. So we'll see what they do with him to see if he can come back next year. Uh, we talked about the cornerback position. If they're not able to get a Patrick Peterson or a Shaquille Griffin, maybe you bring back a Russell Douglas, who I thought he started out last year pretty well. You know, down the season, as the season progressed and went along, I think we kind of saw why he's more of a second corner option and not a cornerback number one. So we'll see how that goes, whether they want to bring him back or go in another direction. Um, running back, Mike Davis. I mean, he played extremely well last year for us, runs hard, brings attitude to the backfield. I know the coaching staff loves him. Judging from his Twitter account, it seems like he wants to come back to Carolina. So we'll see what the market for him is as well. Because um, behind Christian McCaffrey, I think we got uh, Rodney Smith and Reggie Bonifon. I'm not sure what his status is. But, I mean, both of those guys, I mean, they, you know, Bonifant's issue, I think he just has to stay healthy. It's when he's been healthy and gotten his touches, he's been pretty productive, but that's just been an issue. You know, the best ability is availability, and he just had, wasn't able to be available a lot last year. Um, Kev's guy, who I know he want to probably talk about, Alex Armour. You know, I know the fullback position is uh, some teams use it, some teams don't, but I think Considering how much we struggled in the red zone, I don't know why we wouldn't want to bring back Alex Armour to help, you know, be able to run the ball and improve in that area of the field. So we'll see how that goes if they try to get him re-signed before next week. And then one other thing, I mean, it was good at right tackle. We had uh, Taylor Moten. He's coming back on the franchise tag. So that's a positive sign. So we have to maybe fill some holes on the offensive line as well. I know Joe Thune is – the guard for the Patriots will probably hit free agency, so that's one option they can go. Uh, we'll see if Orlando Brown potentially becomes a trade target on the left tackle or if they want to address that in the draft. There's so many directions they can go on the offensive line as well. So it's exciting, man. I think this will be one of the more exciting off seasons we've seen with the Panthers in a long time. Mm. Y'all in the right place for it, folks. Hey, real quick, John. I mean, hey, Will, who was that corner we was talking about in the chat from Pittsburgh that y'all say will be a nice upgrade at the uh, nickel? It was with the Steelers. They uh, they weren't going to um, uh, let him go. And I think also you was talking about the edge. Bud Dupree won a couple of Steelers. Look like they might not be coming back, Will? Yeah, no, Bud Dupree's contract, he's going to be a little bit more on the high price. So he might be uh, considering the lower cap. And then we're going to see a lot of great players that are going to hit free agency because the teams just don't have the cap space to pay them. So I don't know if we're going to be in the market for a guy like Bud Dupree, but, I mean, that would be a great pairing with uh, Brian Burns. They got a cornerback as well. The guy that you mentioned, him, Mike Hilton, would be another great option considering, you know, if Patrick Peterson and Shaquille Griffin aren't available. You know, you can get guys like him as well. So I think with Dante Jackson during the last seven weeks, he was playing at a high level. I think – he was one of the better, statistically, one of the better corners league-wide. So, I mean, if he can hold down that number one corner spot, then maybe you can go a direction like a Mike Hilton to pair with Dante and kind of fill the roster out before you go into the draft so you don't have to reach on a corner for need. Word, word. All right, Larry, uh, you want to talk about some deep tackles, man? The old free agency? Sure, I'll talk about one I'm interested in. His name is Leonard Williams. Um, six years straight. If anybody respects pro football focus, he's never graded lower than the 70. And he's graded as high as 88. And he does well, kind of what uh, Derek Brown does. Well, he's a, a immaculate when it comes to stopping the run. So for us to, you know, we, we've been having issues stopping the run in multiple seasons now and to try to sure that up. Leonard Williams is definitely the way to go. Uh, Derek Brown, Leonard Williams combination, I don't think anybody's running against us. And everybody knows we have a middle linebacker issue right now, so that'll kind of blanket things until we find a Mike linebacker that we're looking for. Um, honestly, my favorite free agent in this entire class that no one's really talking about is from New England, Joe Thune, guard, five years straight, never missed a game. The epitome of durability. And if you look at his tape, he gets better every single year. 
I think he can come fill in the void at left or right guard because he plays both right away. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what his asking price is, how much money he's looking for, but for a team that only has uh, one or two linemen under contract, that would be the way to go for me. And that'll just tell me when it comes time to draft time, I'm just going to go look for me to get some tackles or maybe a center. But Joe Thune is definitely the guy that I would want to have in this uniform ASAP. And nobody's talking about this guy. Interesting. Interesting. Well, maybe, hopefully people won't talk about him enough where we can just snatch him. Go get him. You know he's coming from a good staff. He's coming from outstanding coaching. The guy's from New England. Not too many New England players are, are bad <laughs> that have moved around the league. So, yeah, definitely Joe Thune for me. That's the big guy I'm looking for. And if you want to talk about DTs, again, it's Leonard Williams all the way for me. I don't know what our money is looking like, but if you're going to make a splash in free agency, make it a big one. Word. I feel you. I feel yeah, the you. only thing about Williams, like I, I don't know if you had came on right after I said it, but uh, the Giants slapped the tag on Williams today. Oh, okay. Yeah, man, they, they hit him at the last second with it. There was a couple wow. of players they were looking at tagging, and they chose him out of three players they said for, was going to get tagged, man. So, yeah, that's that's why I had said prior to you coming on that um, the only DT I thought was worth talking about <laughs> got tagged today. Hey, Back. dress it in the drafting. That's how I'm looking at it because you look at that list. It's a lot of average back there. Unless you want to bring back somebody we had from this past season that was pretty solid. What's his name, Kev? Dang, what's the dude name that we, that we had? He had some solid reps. Hold on a sec. Woodrow Hamilton? No, not Woodrow. Zach Kerr? Yeah, Zach Kerr. Zach Kerr. Yeah, he's on the contract anyway. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, we got Zach Kerr, just add some depth. So I wouldn't go into free agency to add depth to that position. I would probably go out and try to draft somebody, somebody I can develop right away and let them play. That's honestly what I would. Because, you know, Roy is looking good. Zach Kerr is looking good. You really got to only add maybe one or two other guys to that rotation, and we we solid. Word up. And plus, remember, um, depending on what Buffalo do, because that's probably going to be the first team to call them, but K1 Short didn't rule out returning to Carolina on a team more of a team-friendly deal. So if he goes out there and there's not much of a market for him, you know, maybe you have K1 Short come in as like a rotational player on a cheaper contract. I can't imagine that, though. I think he's going to have somewhat of a market with teams like uh, Washington and Buffalo Giants that are familiar with him and know what he can do when he's healthy. He'll probably want to play for more of a team, not in a rebuild process, but that's something not to rule out as well. And then you got uh, Jarrell Casey is a free agent. I don't know how much he has left in the tank or if that's the type of veteran they want to bring in. They probably want him more on the younger side. One name to look out for is uh, Larry Ojanobi, the um, former UNC Charlotte defensive tackle that was on the Cleveland Browns. I know he's a free agent, so that might be another guy that they can add to the rotation as well. But to me, you know, I mean, there's a lot of options there. I mean, I'm honestly, I'm just comfortable going with Derek Brown, Bravion Roy, and some draft picks. But if they want to go in the direction of bringing in a guy next to Derek Brown that brings you more of a pass rushing presence than Roy or Kerr will. There are some options out there that they can go after. It's all about how the front office paints this picture to these pending free agents, man. It's really, you know, we're, we're talking rebuild right now, but one or two hits in the draft and one or two key signings, you're not looking at a rebuild no more. You're looking at we competing. So depending on what kind of picture they paint, and we don't really know what that picture is right now with all these rumors floating around. Look at all these rumors. <laughs> Show my age. Man, stay tuned, folks. If, we, if if our front office gets this right, like Larry said, man, we we competing. We, we competing next year, for real. A healthy CMC, a good old line, and Lord knows what else is going to go down, man. We, we, could, we can get shit done. Real talk. All right. Um, any other free agency news, gentlemen? We cover about everything. Still, yeah, I know. Um, I think the biggest news with the Panthers is what they're doing with the quarterback. I know we already did a show on the Deshaun Watson and Matthew Stafford that they showed interest. Another name linked to the Panthers has been um, Jets quarterback Sam Darnold. I know 
He's officially mm. on the trading block. And I know a lot of teams are showing interest in him. Personally, I wouldn't give a day one or day two pick for Darnold. Uh, I liked his tape in college, but he just hasn't shown much in the NFL so far. I know people like to blame the Jets. And, yes, he was in a bad situation with Adam Gaze. Um, the Jet, I mean, the whole environment up there was toxic for any young quarterback. But you just look at him play. There's a lot of issues with him as well. You know, he has a lot of off-target passes. I mean, if you watch, as I was watching Robbie Anderson and actually did a film video breakdown on him, and I was just amazed at how many times he was open, getting separation, but the ball was just off target from Sam Darnold. Then he comes here in Carolina and has a career year with Teddy, who the fan base doesn't seem to like. So I just don't seem to see, see why, how giving up draft capital for Sam Darnold makes sense at this point. You know, I could see that they want to make a splash and go after like they did a Matthew Stafford or after a Deshaun Watson. I think after a while, when you start going down and down the list of quarterbacks and lower and lower and lower your standards, you get to the point where you're going to bring in a guy who's not going to really give you a marginal improvement over what Teddy Bridgewater gives us already. So unless it's a, you know, elite guy like Deshaun Watson, you know, guy you're not going to find, in the draft anytime soon who can, mm -hmm. you know, carry a team and be and, you know, give you those extra three, four wins just off his talent alone. I don't really see the need to be active in the free agent or trading for a quarterback market. That's just my opinion. Yeah, you want to hear the joke of the day, Will? Uh-oh. So I'm about. <laughs> hmm. Darrell Williams is a free agent, too. Boy, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bring Daryl back. Oh, boy, you better stop. <laughs> That's a great value contract. Bring Daryl back, man. <laughs> What's Daryl going to get, man? The pro, the, what was it? What was he? Uh, second team all pro second one year. Second team all pro, yeah. yeah. Oh, we're going to get, oh, I can't bend, I can't bend over. My back hurts. We call him bum juice around these parts. Bum juice. Man, we got our right tackle. You guys got to get him to a long-term extension. But they didn't let Taylor Moten hit free agency. They were, Hell no. Nah. Got that tag on him and keep him here another year. But but that said, though, I mean, I, one sign that we haven't even talked about that I really liked was a Trent Scott. Now, I don't think hmm. he's the starting answer or going to be your franchise left tackle. But as far as a guy that can step in and start at both tackle positions, possibly move inside and add depth to your offensive line at four of the positions, I think that was a great – value signing to have him on the roster. So now Absolutely. you can find your franchise left tackle in the draft, draft a Rashawn Slater, draft a Pene Sewell, and then you have Sewell, Moten with Trent Scott backing up both positions. I think you got a very good tackle rotation right there. And like you said, he can play a couple other positions. He might actually thrive at guard. Looking at his, his skill set, he might actually be a great guard. So, you know. That was definitely an outstanding re-signing, I should say. And I'm happy we have him because when you look at it, at the end of the day, you look at his resume, he beat out some guys that you would never expect to beat out. You know what I'm saying? Where was where was Greg Little's reps going to, Trent Scott? <laughs> so, you know, definitely a great sign. And another rumor is that they've been talking about bringing back Russell Kong. I'm not a fan of that rumor. I'm not a fan of that idea, but that's something that we also got to take a look at. It is what it is, man. We, we yeah, I mean, with sure Okun, I mean, he, he wasn't terrible, but, again, the best ability is availability. And I think now you're looking at he was hurt much the last year before coming here. He had trouble staying on the field. So how many games are we going to realistically get out of Okun if we were to re-sign him? Now, I mean, it's possible they get to the draft and Slater and Sewell are both off the board when we pick. So now we're stuck with what we got. Then, yeah, maybe we can revisit bringing back Okun to see what he wants to play for. But I mean, that would kind of be my backup plan, in my opinion. That would definitely be a post-draft signing for me. Mm. Well, since we was talking about um, Trent Scott, um, Larry, I know, I know you probably, I know he probably don't cross your radar as well. I wouldn't mind picking up his Grambling teammate. Uh, David Moore out of Grambling. Um, you know, I know we're not, you know, I know we're talking free agency, but our, uh, 
yeah, if we can get a Grambling reunion going up in here, uh, it, uh, it'll definitely help. Uh, he's someone that can play either guard spot. And um, when you watch the film, the word nasty comes to mind. So just uh, something to keep an eye on. And when we uh, deep dive into the uh, to that aspect of it. But, uh, yeah, a Grambling Union will be nice around here. Definitely for depth. Um, did we ever did we get a, get on the subject of uh, Rashawn Slater's pro day? Is that something that we allowed to talk about tonight, fellas? Dude, why are we on the topic of old line? Why not? <laughs> man, that man had thirty three reps on the bench press. Massive, Ooh. explosive, ran the four eight forty. I don't care what position we need. He can come in and play tackle, guard, center, whatever you want to play for me after that pro day. I view him as a guard. I, I view him as an interior guy because he's so powerful and he don't have the length. But with that athleticism he showed today, he can come in and play whatever position he feel like playing. Mm. Wow. That's Man, you know, I know everybody's, you know, quarterback thirsty, quarterback hungry, this and that. It's the you know, popular position. But, man, you just look at what Tampa Bay, I mean, they went out, got Tristan Wirfs, who was a very good athlete in last year's draft. Just look how well he came in and played well off the bat, you know, and I think with, uh, mm-hmm. he's still a rookie and has a development curve, but because of just his athleticism and athletic profile, he was able to step in and contribute and play well right away. And now as he depolishes and develops his technique, imagine the kind of player worse is going to be in the next three, four years. And I think the same thing with Makai Becton in the Jets. Now, he didn't have as good as a surrounding cast. A team is worse, did, but he stepped in and played well immediately right off the bat. So, I mean, just imagine being able to get a Slater or a Sewell that can step in and be your left tackle right off the bat. And then you won't have to worry about your tackle position with Moten and him for the next five years. And you can maybe address quarterback in next year's draft. I know a lot of professional sports writers and scouts are saying that next year's quarterback class may even be better than this one. So mm. I think if you, I think if you can get a Sewell or a Slater, it just allows you time to be patient with selecting your quarterback in the future. And the guy that you will select will come into a much better situation than what he would with the line we have now. And you know what, Will? You've been trying to make me throw up since I done came on here, man. You know how high I was with Wirfs. You know how high I was with Beckton. I'm just so tired of us passing on outstanding football players that we as four-man rush know are going to be great players. So it's like when you said those two names right then and there, that kind of hurt my feelings, man, because those are two guys I was extremely high on last year. Yeah, but if we can get grab either Slater or uh, or um, Sewell, I, I think that would uh go go towards making up for that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you know, man, uh, you know, me and you, we we beating the drum loudest for an offensive line overhaul. I mean, this draft is yeah, five years now. We've been beating this drum. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, this, and to be honest, this is the perfect draft to like address our offensive line and be set realistic for the next five to eight years seriously because it's just a talent and um you know you was talking about um the bench press by um Rashawn Slater today uh I don't know when Georgia's pro day is but I'm gonna try to watch it because they got a interior lineman down there by the name of Ben Cleveland who they think is uh, capable of breaking the all-time bench press record of 47 in the combine Wow! so you know he's looking like a, a late day two day three um, caliber pick now. Um, if you break that record, I don't know if that'll boost him up or whatever as pro day, but um, man, like, <laughs> like if we spent, we could easily spend three, three draft picks on, on just offense lineman on and be very justified and be, and be set for a long time. Like this, this draft would really set our offense line up to be in great position for consistency for years. You know, no more journeyman no more undrafted free agents no more different starting left tackles since jordan gross retired like all of that can be like done with you know i just don't want to be sitting here this time next year talking about same exact way oh look how good rashawn slater's doing look how good sewell's doing in another uniform i'm so i'm so tired of this talk 
well, two years ago it was Rag. Now last year it was Worfs and and Becton. Give me my give me my guys, Kev. Give me my guys now. Like it's our turn. Y'all done got y'all pretty cornerbacks. Y'all done, y'all done did everything y'all want to do. Went and got your edge rushes and all that. Give me some hog mollies, man. I'm tired of this. Word up. What well, I found interesting, though, you know, we already know we're thin at the guard position. I mean, I don't think any – I think Dennis Daly, who – I mean, he's kind of a hybrid guard tackle. I don't think we have any guards back from the roster last year. Tyler Larson, Chris Reed, John Miller, and – um. Michael Schofield. Hofield, um, not Scho. That's Hofield. He played like a ho. But go ahead. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> All those guys are free agents, and not one of them has been attempted to be re-signed yet. So that kind of shows you what Matt Rule and Pat Meyer all think about, you know, the offensive line unit they had last year. The only guy they wanted back was Trent Scott and Taylor Moten. So mm-hmm. none of those free agents got re-signed. So we'll see how active they are in the free agent guard market or – even in the draft, I know Matt Rule was at the Senior Bowl watching, you know, Trey Smith and Deontay Brown doing damage. So I think definitely the interior offensive line is something they're definitely want to want to address in a major way. And one more guy, real quick. Um, I know I brought up Ben Cleveland from Georgia. Larry, you could probably speak more on it because I think you have more access to Georgia games. They center Trey here. Like I think he would be the perfect replacement for Paradis. Uh, he actually has played both guard spots when I did my research on him. I mean, he's also played um, at center. He, uh, you know, you know, he's looking like an early day three uh, type pick. But, um, you know, it just goes back to what I said earlier, man. It's, it's just so many players to get this offensive line right in this draft. Like, we could just finally just, like, be done talk about offensive linemen in the draft for a good mm-hmm. minute if we if we choose to invest into the offensive line like we did the defense last year. Trend I've been noticing in the last few drafts is versatility is becoming the key, the key point when it comes to the interior. You're getting a lot of guys that can play both guard positions and centers. And to me, that's just high value, especially for the situation that we're in where we're kind of depleted on the interior when it comes to the offensive line. So we can get a guy like him or you can get a you can get a Rashawn Slater where you can just put anywhere you want to put. We definitely need some versatility on the interior offensive line. Mm-hmm. We do know Paradis is only under contract one more year. So, yeah, I'm with you, Ken. If I, I don't care what position it is. I just know we got to get some offensive linemen. Mm-hmm. And if I can get me a guy that can play center guard, if I can put C slash G next to his name, I feel like that's a win. And I'll, I'll let the I'll let the uh, coaching staff worry about developing the guy and what he's supposed to be. We just got to have some guys there now. Right on. Stay tuned, folks. Stay tuned. We we'll solidify that front, boy. We're gonna be a, a problem. I tell you that right now. Hey, does anybody know? I'm sorry. Does anybody know when Clemson Pro Day is? Because uh, Larry, another one of your favorites, um, Jackson Carmen, he uh, he do up, ain't he? Yes, sir. And I'm dropping. I'm gonna drop his uh, my scouting profile on him the day of their their pro day. I think it's either. I think it's the 11th. To be honest with you. I think it's a couple of years. Give me one second. I'll double check for you. But I think it's definitely Clemson. Clemson Pro Day is real soon. Clemson Pro Day is real soon. So you claim yep, Clemson Clemson it's the 11th. Make sure you catch that. This Thursday. So look out for my Jackson Carmen breakdown. It's coming out. I know. You heard it here first, folks. Yeah, I talked about uh, cap casualties. I forgot that um, the Raiders have released Gabe Jackson. I mean, he's 29 years old. He might be out of the age range the Panthers are looking for right now, but he's been a good guard in this league for a long time. And I think with the salary cap the way it was, the Raiders, he could still play well, but the Raiders just can't afford to keep him. So if you want to add some guard depth and free agency, I mean, Gabe Jackson might be a guy that can come in and step in and start right away. Right. Yeah, there's definitely options out there. If I'm not mistaken, <laughs> didn't the Raiders do some Raiders shit? They they signed away Trent oh, Brown God. from New England, gave him a huge ass contract to trade him right back to New England two years God. later. <laughs> I saw that. I was like, they did what? <laughs> I'm like, boy, it's, it's 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 crazy out here in these streets, man. I was just mm-hmm. like, um, I, 
Mayock, uh, whatever the GM of the Raiders, I, I, I know you bamboozled your way into that GM job, but, bro, that was a head scratcher for me. Mm. I see a six-time Super Bowl championship team seeing an opportunity to grab a starting tackle and add depth to their line and address one of the most important positions based on that transaction. Mm. I mean, it's no coincidence. Watch what. Watch these teams that are winning championships, how they continuously address that offensive line and keep their quarterbacks on their feet. <laughs> What's up? No talk. All right, gentlemen. Um, any parting shots? I was going to ask Larry if he wanted to give his uh, breakdown of what he thought of Manscaped because, uh, you know, he, he, uh, he came on late. You know, we all That's wanted true. to – you know, Larry, if you uh, if you use the products, you know, me and Will already did our description and go ahead and let us know what you think of it. Oh man, I wish I could have heard y'all stories, man. I'm sorry about that, but I'm absolutely I'm absolutely happy, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. You know well, one thing that we do is we cater to our women. We help bring Panther football to our women. I promise you, Manscape allows you to give that type of attention to yourself so the women pour back into you. That's all I can tell you about that, fellas. Right on, man. Every right single on, product man. from the ball deodorant to the toner, the clippers don't clip you. The boxes are the boxer briefs are extremely comfortable. They and I've been wearing the t-shirt around and every every day I walk out, if I put that t-shirt on, somebody asks me about what Manscaped is and how it works for me. I have nothing but positive things to say about it. There you go, folks. There you go. 20% off 4MR Skate at manscaped.com. Make sure you use that. Free shipping. And for, yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. So now, any parting shots? Hey, fellas, take care of your balls, and she will take care of you. <laughs> Real talk, man. Real I just got to keep talk. it gangster with y'all for a second. Ah, yeah. <laughs> that's real. Shit. Hey, bring back Jim Jones balling. <laughs> That's real, man. Shoot. Yeah, man. Shout out to Manscaped, man. That's my part of the shot. You know, hopefully it's the start of a long relationship, business relationship, man. Go get y'all a discount while it's up there, man. Limited time offer. No talk. No talk. You you'll you'll be helping us out and your balls. Real talk. <laughs> you won't never have to beg your lady for no attention down there again. Won't ever happen again. None, man. None. I mean, psh, you guys gotta check it out, man. Just, just use it, bro. I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you. Just use it. That's, psh, it's a whole other world down there, kid. It's, <sighs> the older you get, <laughs> the more important it becomes. Amen. And I work at the airport. I do. Physical labor, day in and day out. I'm fresh all day long, fellas. Nope. I can't lie to you. Realness. You, you guys know how it is, man. You doing a lot of moving around and shit, man. You sweat, you sweaty, hot and shit, man. Shit gets chafy and shit. Not with Manscaped. Mm -mm. It's the realness. Yeah. yeah, you don't want that uncomfortable feeling of having a scratch and itch down there either because you're sweaty and all. It eliminates all that. What's up? What's up? <laughs> Keep that spray on you, man. It'll, it'll, it'll solve problems for you, kid. <laughs> it'll solve problems for you. Make your balls feel nice and cool, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's got a little cooling sensation, right? Yeah, it does. It oh, does. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yo, that toner, man. That toner shot me. I was like, okay. I, yeah. I, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice and cool and dry. You know man. what I'm saying? Yeah, and it smells manly. You know what I'm saying? It's not fruity and shit. It's, it's you know, it's a man smell, but it's smell. it's a man smell that attracts the ladies. Exactly. That's it's it. Pleasing. Some yeah. pheromones in there. <laughs> ladies, think of cool water for the testicles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tim, what you know about that cool water, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> the cologne. Yeah, that's, that's like. <laughs> Taking it back right there. Now, granted, most of most of our our, our listeners and viewers are, are men, but fellas, go tell your sister, go tell your tell your wife, go tell your girl, whatever. 
it's it's a whole other world, Jack. And millions, millions of people use this stuff, man. Believe it or not, they're based out of San Diego. They they've been throwing products around the globe for about about six years now, man. You know, and they 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 uh they like what what they saw with us, and and now I'm I'm glad we got it, man. All the fellows have been speaking high of it, man. Before we record it tonight, man, it's 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 great products, bro. Manscaped.com, man. We'll, and we'll uh we'll put that the uh the the uh, link or the code, excuse me, and the link and all the other stuff in our in our comment section for you guys. Thanks for listening to the Four Man Rush, by the way. All right, folks. Um, whether you're listening to this podcast in the morning, afternoon, or evening, man, uh, uh ho- hopefully you uh use a manscape for your balls. <laughs> but all, all serious, man. Th- thanks, uh, thanks you guys for uh for checking out the Four Man Rush podcast, uh, episode eighty four. Um, I hope uh, the year is going good for you so far. Uh, COVID is still real. Uh, be be careful out there. It's, it's looking better, but you know, better safe than sorry. Uh, make sure you check out our website, uh, all our social media platforms. The guys are putting out some great write ups. Um, you know, and, and of course, Larry mentioned he he's, he's going to have some um, some great info coming out on Thursday. I mean, it's some good stuff, man. Good stuff for the Four Man Rush and FourManRush.com. Um, so, thanks, guys, gals, if you're listening. Um, we appreciate you guys, and uh, shoot, we'll we'll talk to you guys soon. Um, next week we might have a little a little surprise for you, um, a little collab. But we'll just be on the lookout for that. It's, it's, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. Well, on behalf of the Four Man Rush and myself, you guys uh, take care of yourselves. You know, wash your wash your balls. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure they're all nice and comfy. Peace of Manscaped. And as always, keep pounding. And that's clear. Tim, you're a fool with it, bro. Tim, <laughs> wash your sack. <laughs> Absolute fool. Wash your tea bags. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, that, that shit's real, though, man. Yeah. Uh, I was impressed with the Clippers. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, like, are you serious? <laughs> that thousand RPMs. Wow. Nick, Nick not 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 one there, Nick. Not one. Not a right. nail, another. Not nail, another. Respect. Man. So we can legit put the hashtag D's nuts, right? <laughs> <laughs> I ordered the body wash. Yo, get the sound bite right. from Snoop, Tim. I'll throw it in there. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> you got a body wash? Yeah, they got a body wash. I just ordered. Yeah, they got, uh, what's it called? The uh, cleanser? Yeah. I put the promo code on there just to show a little bit of love. Yo, they got some nice shit on there. Like, beyond what we got. Like, I, I looked at, like, yeah. all this stuff, and I was like, okay. Yeah, shit, bro. Man, I got about... I got about ten confirmed purchases using our promo code so far. So y'all know. Yeah, I got about four. So I don't know what the target is they're looking for, but I hope we uh we nail it so we can secure this bag, bro. Yeah. They, I mean, they were they were happy that we had a lot of male customers. Well, you know, male consumers, I guess you could say, with our content and stuff. But dude, you I mean you got. You got St. Patrick's Day coming up. You I mean you got these holidays coming up that you know men are known for and things of that nature, man. And I, I think that'll help too. You know, Easter, um, you know, the Easter's about reproduction, anyway. It's funny, but anyway. Sell the women is like Sell the women is like buy a gift for like birthday or something. But yeah, man, we'll get the uh, what, female I, I, audience with the um doing like the collab with the Blitz and maybe have some guests from other teams during the season. There we I go. Know there's some Tampa Bay Buck female fans that's active on Twitter. Giants who play them next year. Mm-hmm. We'll expand our reach. We got female Jacksonville Jaguar uh, fans following us too. Word. Right. When we play, uh, we play them next. We play the AFC, uh, East South. next year. East, yeah, we got the East coming up. Okay. For Miami, New England, I get a Miami Dolphin fan. Buffalo and the Jets. Yeah. Hey, Buffalo is gonna be a tough out. Man, bro, I don't, I don't know if we're ready for that. 
And that's going to be at Buffalo. That division is actually shifting a little bit. It's shifting a little bit because I expect Miami to be a little bit better too. Listen, they trade for Watson. Whether well, Watson or two is going to be a problem, but they trade for Watson. Boy. Ooh, yikes. <laughs> yikes. See, Miami oh, can yikes. give up that type of draft capital to get Watson and still be good. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I don't know what New England going to do. They haven't re-signed Cam yet, so he's going to hit free agency. I'm probably going to see what, 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 people, what the market is for him, I guess. Bro, if Cam go to the Redskins or the Patriots, both those teams play at Charlotte next year. That's a game we all got to go to. Yeah, y'all right. try to be there. And I'm going to be honest, I wonder if the Redskins let Alex Smith go to potentially make a way for Cam to come through. Man, that would be live. Cam and Rivera at BOA next year. And look, and if they do that, night. they have all three former Panther quarterbacks there. Heineck, <laughs> Kyle Allen, <laughs> and Cam. <laughs> Shit, Ron Rivera, Scott Turner. Shit. It might be on a Sunday night. We might finally get a primetime game with Cam's revenge game. Hey, fuck Ron for that, man. He was supposed to come here and kick our ass, bro. What the hell? (laughs) Right. He was supposed to put it on us, bro. (laughs) Haskins basically handed the game to us. Word, man. Exactly. Damn, Ron, you couldn't blow us out, Paul. (laughs) We still got fans talking about that game, man. Fuck them, man. I don't tank for shit. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't going to come whoop our ass, we going to come get it. We're going to take that dub. No, we, we don't need talk. to tank, but the Redskins was a better team than us. They should have won without, without us tanking. <laughs> no, I, it still blows my mind. That one drive, we just ran the football all the way down the field. Right. To the end zone. Against the what? Yeah, against two, a top ranked line. defense line. Yeah. 14 like, straight is? plays. Bruh. What the hell is this? <laughs> and a wide receiver had the biggest run of all. Curtis Samuel had broke off a 30 yard run of yeah. the. <laughs> Can't make this shit up. Hey, man. That's Can't that's a mind frame. A lot of people forget Matt Rule's an O line guy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know he done mm-hmm. coached on both sides, but. Yeah, you know. Yeah, coach I mean, your source team. already said he wasn't happy with the um, O line talent. Uh uh-uh. Good. Good. Nigga, how could you be happy? They ain't one bright spot besides him. <laughs> Tell them over, bro. Yeah, really? They didn't sign just... none of them guys back. They got Larson gone, Miller yeah, gone, man. Schofield gone, and Reed. None of them got re signed. So clearly they blowing that up. Yeah, blowing you that. got to, man. I mean, the fam say it all. Yeah. Like if you go back to that that fourth down play about talking against the Raiders, where Armor got the ball, man, they allowed both Okun and Schofield allowed Farrell to p- push both of them down the hole and block the hole. Mm-hmm. Look at the home. Like, they always talk about Teddy game winning drives. I mean Raiders, they got stuff. Saints, Teddy dropped back and has gets sat, has nowhere to go with the football. I mean, how many of those game winning drives? was on the offensive line, and they just making Teddy the scapegoat. I bet you exactly. most of them were. Right. I get tired of fans trying to use the sack t- total and number where there's as saying that old line wasn't that bad. Yes, the fuck they was. Like, the fact that he got rid yeah. of it quick doesn't mean, you know, that don't mean that we had a good offensive line. See, that's just like mm-hmm. sack is sack stuff. A problem, or also a quarterback stat. Because if you look at it, guys like Russell Wilson, they're always saying, "Oh, Russell Wilson never has good offensive lines." Well, he running back there in circles four, five times and spinning and circling, trying to hold the ball and find the guy downfield. Of course, he's going to take a bunch of sacks. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, look at, I got you the hurries, man. The hurries is what tell me the story. What's going on? Right. Man. Yeah. True. With well, Deshaun Watson, he hold the ball forever, running around, and we got Laramie Tunsil. Great left tackle, but he hold the ball so long, try to extend plays, doesn't want to take the easy shot. So the, the courts, the guys like that are going to take more sacks than like a Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Key to the offensive line is how long can you keep your quarterback on his spot without him getting moved off his spot? That's the key to it right then and there. That's what matters to me. Can you keep your quarterback on his spot? Can you keep him on his spot without getting him rattled? That's what I need. Oh, Kong ain't doing that for us. I don't, I don't want to bring him back. I was just talking to just let y'all know he out there and they talking about bringing him back. That's a prediction. Man. But, 
Greg, he what was nobody is. saying a word about no Greg damn little? That nigga I ain't heard his name mentioned all all season. Not a fucking peep. I ain't even gonna lie. I looked just to see, you know, if any update with his injury, what he's on IR for. Ain't ain't nothing about Greg Little since the season dropped. So, thing is, our offensive line was so bad. If you watch Teddy during the second half of the year, when he comes off his first read in his progression, he he thinks pressure is gonna hit him. So now he's panicking, mm-hmm. and even when the pressure's not getting after him, he's already got it in his head that he can't get past one progression without getting slapped. <laughs> so last I seen from Greg Little, he was on Twitter doing basketball workouts, doing doing box jumps and all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Bruh. You know, hey, you know that box jump out. that Luke and them used to do when you, you come down from a sitting mm-hmm. spot and you jump up on that's what he was doing. Mm-hmm. I guess he's trying to work on his explosion, but that uh, it is what it is. Nigga, lift some weights. That's what I need you to yeah, do. Yeah, I was saying, it ain't your explosion, son. It's... He's always been a good athlete. He just all oh, he just soft. He's That's he's fucking soft. soft, man. When you watch him, his pads never make any noise. He just uses his long arms and just try to push. You know, like my coach used to say, you say, you titty bopping with him, boy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, like when the last time you seen him engage a defender? With some with some force and like move him off the ball. All he tried to do is use some long arms to keep you away. That's it. Shit, get on my fucking nerves, like, man. He be throwing his he be throwing like... his body at cornerbacks in space. That's how he got his little corner, his little couple pancakes on the year. Yeah, he got a bull rush by a blitz and corn. I never forget that shit. I was like, what? Man, crazy. All right, gents. All right, y'all. <sighs> It was fun, Hello. fellas. Hey, I how it go? Good seeing you right. chat with you, man. Yeah, hopefully we get All the right. blitz on next week. So we'll see. Yeah, I hope so. Y'all stay dangerous. All right. All right. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Keep them balls clean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>